Hello Algebra 2. This video lesson focuses on chapter 5.1 and it's designed to explain how to graph quadratic equations. It's intended to be accompanied by a document that I've provided on my website. It's a guide, a printed guide that walks you through these same steps. Together the two things I think should um, get you to the point where you can graph a quadratic equation regardless of which of three different forms that equation is written in. And those three forms are standard form, vertex form, and intercept form. So let me show you each of those forms as an example here. In the generic style it looks like this, but a typical example of a standard form um, quadratic um, would look like this one right here. And this is the way that you will usually end up seeing them when we talk about quadratics as the year goes along. But that doesn't mean you always will. And certainly in real life when you face them, you'll sometimes see them in a form that looks a lot more like this, or in generic form looks like this, where you've got one binomial with the exponent on it, um, and some, um, uh, some uh, coefficient multiplied by that binomial, and some number added or subtracted outside of it. Lastly, you could also see two binomials, like you see here in the specific example and here in the generic example. And again, there's, uh, there could be a coefficient out in front of that. Uh, any of these three cases co could come up in a science class, an economics class, any sort of um, uh, class that, that you might take going forward, um, whether at high school or the college level. Okay, so let's look at the easiest to me of the three types in terms of graphing. That doesn't mean it's the easiest to work with in all respects, but I think this is the easiest to graph. I think it actually appears maybe even as the last example in my printed guide, and I'm sorry about that, but I thought it made most sense to start um, easily and then move toward the more complicated. So in the intercept form, you are actually told the two points that are going to appear as x-intercepts. Not y-intercepts this time, but x-intercepts. Uh, and there will be two. If you think about any kind of parabola, and remember, quadratic equations are always parabolas. They're always, roughly speaking, u-shapes, either right side up or upside down. And whether it's right side up or upside down, it's probably going to hit the x-axis. And if it does, it's probably going to go through twice. So here it's telling you the two places that it does. But you have to change the signs of each of these two constants that's inside the, the parens as part of the binomial. So that becomes negative 2 and positive 4. So there are my two intercepts at negative 2 and positive 4. And now I'm well on my way. The next step is to mark the dividing line because after all a parabola is perfectly symmetrical. So there's a mirror down the middle of those two intercepts and there it is. Next step after that, sorry, I want to highlight that, um, is to plug the value of that mirror line into your equation. So here's my equation. Now I'm plugging um, x is 1, because there's that mirror line, in place of x here and in place of x there. So I've got 1 plus 2 and 1 minus 4. I work this out and I'm going to find that y turns out to be 9. So on this mirror line, I'm going to have a point where y is 9. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't fit perfectly on my graph, but there it is. Now I've got three points. Um, I've got a maximum, and I've got two intercepts. That's probably enough to draw a pretty rough graph. As we go forward with these lessons, I'm going to talk about the idea that you really ought to have five points to draw a curve, but these three points are going to get us well on our way. Just remember, though, that quadratics are always curves. It's not going to be a V-shape any longer. Okay, so now, here's your turn. Go ahead, um, hit the pause button. When you come back, I will show you how I've graphed this same equation right here. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that and that you recognize that your intercepts are at positive 3 and negative 5. So there they are. And then that you recognized that your mirror line was halfway between those two points. So there it is, where x equals negative 1 then I assume you plugged negative 1 into your equation here. So there it is plugged in. And you'll find that y turns out to be 4. And so 4 
um, or actually negative one four is the point on this mirror line and there's that negative one four and now you've got enough roughly speaking to draw your graph and there you have it again we'll talk in class about the idea of using five points instead of three all right moving on to the next form vertex form that's not too terribly much more difficult in fact it ought to look a lot um, it ought to look quite familiar because it's very similar to the setup that we had when we were talking about V-shaped graphs not so terribly long ago. Remember the absolute value graphs that we were working with. And in that case, these were absolute value bars here instead of parens. Um, and there was no exponent here, but we still had H and K. And remember when we had H and K before, that told us our vertex. The only problem was we had to change the sign on H and keep the sign on K. So the vertex for this particular example here is going to be at negative 3, positive 4. So I've gone ahead and plotted it there at negative 3, 4. And since that's good, I'm, I'm calling this our vertex. It's really either our maximum or minimum. There's not a perfect V here. Um, but uh, because we've got a negative coefficient on this, we know it's going to be an upside down parabola. So that is going to be the maximum here. And the two sides are going to go down to the right and down to the left. But our dividing line is going to go right through that point. The next task to get this completely graphed is to pick a point to the right of that dividing line. I recommend just going one step to the right and picking negative 2. Plug in negative 2 now for x. And what happens? What does y become when x is negative 2? I'll go ahead and put that in there. And you'll find as you work this through, that y becomes 2. Okay, so now I've got a point at negative 2, 2 right here. And there it is. Now remember, this is a mirror line, so I've got a mirror point on the opposite side. And again, if I'm willing to live with just three points and I can draw a curve through them, then I've got all I need to draw that parabola. And there it is. Again, hit the pause button. When you come back, I'll show you how I've worked out this one and how I've graphed it. Okay, I'm going to assume that you worked it through while pausing and that you're back to see my answer. First of all, <coughs> the, um, the vertex is at 2, 3, as I've plotted here. Second of all, um, that means that the dividing line here is where x is 2. So I've um, moved one step to the right where x is 3 and plugged 3 in here. And if you do that, you'll find that when x is 3, y is 3 and a half. And so there's y um, is 3 and a half, and there's the mirror point over here. Now here's a perfect case where it really looks like it's pretty hard to draw a proper parabola through just three points. So you might want to think in this case about picking one more point to the right. What would happen if you tried x is 4? So plug that in. And you're going to find when x is 4 that y is 5. Plot that point and its mirror, and now you clearly have enough to draw a proper curve, proper parabola. And there it is. That's the graph you should have drawn, and I hope you did. Okay, moving on to the last example, or the last form, which is standard form. Um, even though this is the most commonly seen, it tends to be the most difficult to graph you're not given a lot of information directly from the standard form equation. Remember we talked about the idea that the only thing you're given is the axis of symmetry and that the way to find that axis of symmetry is to assume is to understand that x is equal to negative b over 2a. In fact this is a relationship you have to memorize. Well that coefficient's my a, negative 8 here is my b, and 6 is my c. So plugging these values in for a and b, I've got, well, negative negative b becomes, or negative, yeah, negative negative 8, excuse me, becomes positive 8. And then I've got 2 times a, or in other words, 2 times 2. So x, or in other words, my axis of symmetry, is where x is 2. There's x is 2. Now, plug x is 2 back into your equation so, and you're going to find 
that y becomes negative 2. Okay, and so right here at y is negative 2, I've got my, well, again, roughly speaking, my vertex. In this case, it's going to be a maximum because my lead coefficient, my a coefficient, is positive. So I'm going to have a right side up u, or you might think of it as a smiley face. I'm not going to continue further here in the interest of time. Instead of going farther in graphing this, I'm going to have you do one. But do realize you would have to keep going. You're not really done here with standard form. It's going to be a parabola just like the other two forms were. It's just that I've, I'm choosing to stop here and give you a chance to try one. So here's the standard form equation that I want you to graph. Hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'll talk you through that. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've gone ahead and done that, and I'll talk you through my solution to it. First of all, the axis of symmetry is going to be at negative b over 2a, or in other words, positive 9 over 2 times negative 3 halves. If you work that out, you're going to find that that means x is negative 3. And here I've drawn that axis of symmetry at x is negative 3. Now plug x is negative 3 into your equation, and you're going to find well, in this case, it's going to be a maximum point because it's this negative coefficient here means it's an upside down u, a frowny face. So upside down u's have a maximum here at the, at the middle. So plug in this value, negative 3, in for x, and you're going to find that y is 4 and a half. And that's where you should have ended up for now. You've got at least the maximum drawn and I'm not going to ask you to draw the whole parabola since I didn't do it for you in the previous example. That's as far as this lesson goes. We'll talk about this more in class.